Welcome to the fight game. He's Ice Water. I'm Puma. And the Canelo fight is coming up uh, this weekend, so we're going to talk about that. And uh, I mentioned something. Let's talk about the fight first. And I mentioned something that Andre Ward said about Canelo, which I totally agree with. But what do you think about this fight with Canelo? Is it just a, a coronation to um, his legacy fight? Or can uh, can this um, challenger really kind of give him a fight and, and have a chance to take it? Well, the unfortunate thing for uh, the challenge is that the way that he fights, it, it's easy pickings for Canelo, right? Canelo, the way he fights, he's the guy's more strategic. Canelo can get to him. He, he can uh, really dominate and hurt him. This guy's kind of more crafty. And you know how uh, even when Canelo starts slow, he just waits and waits and picks you apart, like, kind of like what he did with Caleb Plant and so many others, right? He just walks you down and then once – he gets you and start hitting you, and you don't have, you can't be all cute anymore, and you really have to come to the center of the ring, then that's when he does his damage. And I think that's, and plus two, I think the inexperience of this young man is going to is going to cause, is going to allow Canelo to do a lot of things. This guy's not been in championship fights like that. And he, although he's very talented and he looks good, and the resume does not, uh, does not disappoint, and he's undefeated. So with that being said, that's great on the resume, on paper. But when you get in the ring against a qualified you know, champion, we've seen a lot. You can call it, you, you can be a major problem because this guy's been around the block a lot more than you have. Yeah, um, and and I can, I can kind of see that that um, you don't want to embarrass yourself in in um, you know Cinco de Mayo or or in uh, September um, in um, um, Latino or, or Mexican Independence Day. But Andre Ward says something I've been I've been talking about for years, and it's finally to me that a, a professional fighter comes out and kind of calls uh, another professional fighter out. Um, so Carnelo is avoiding fights to me with Terence Crawford and Benavides. They won't fight these guys, and he comes up with all these excuses. And the excuse he has for Terence Crawford that oh he's too light, but uh, Andre Ward made it a point to say, listen, Amir Khan was too light too. And you didn't have any any problems getting in the ring with him and dominating. And he just kind of really kind of pushed the issue that Canelo will only really kind of take fights that he feels that he can dominate in. And so I kind of think that way too. And I kind of take it more seriously when Andre Ward said, because Andre Ward took on all, all comers. All, I mean, he didn't turn down a fight and to the point where people did not want to fight Andre Ward because he was that dominant of a fighter. And so I... So from anybody else, I was like, you know, nah, you know, he's really kind of maybe hating on Canelo. But when Andre Ward says it, this is a bona fide champion that was part of probably top 10 pound for pound at that particular time, when people were avoiding to fight him, I take it much more seriously when he says it. Yeah, but I can see that. Um, some people might point to the fact that, that uh, Andre Ward would have not had the opportunity to fight Canelo himself. Right. I mean, because you think about that whole point around that time where the one fight that Andre Ward kind of won, it was with Triple G and Triple G kind of avoided him like the play. But um, he's right there that kind of say that in that regard. Um, I can see that the only thing when it, that I'm, I wouldn't speculate or, or disagree with what he's saying. But the one thing I will mention is the fact that until we see what Crawford does at 154, right, can he's handle the weight? Can he move up to 160? You know, is training Bomax and we, I can see him at 168. I mean, but can you look? I need to see him evolve. So to me, it's almost like a fight that it's it's a it's almost like a pipe dream. And I understand what he's saying about when you fought American. Okay, yeah, I get that, but Terrence Carver is a different monster. It's a different monster. And I don't think uh, Canelo was gonna fight that fight unless he feels like he can have the upper hand by forcing him to come up as high as he can. So I get that, but it's easy to say if he does fight him, even at a lower weight, people say you knew he was too smart, you still fought him anyway. He can't win that argument. Benavidez is a whole different ballgame. Benavidez continues to show that he's worthy of, of the fight skill-wise, right? He's showing you that he's beating these folks in. But the one thing, like I told you before, and I still think it holds true, that Canelo can hold over Benavidez's head is – you had the opportunity to be the champion. You were the champion twice before. You messed it up by doing stuff kind of crazy outside the ring. Yeah. And now you had the opportunity. You showed up supposedly intoxicated at an event. It's like, are you serious? 
Are you real serious? But then again, we had Ryan Garcia who said he was drinking and getting high and anything is possible. But getting back to the point, <laughs> I'm just saying that I, I said it from the beginning and I'll say it again. I don't think that Can Canelo knows he does not have to fight Benavidez. I don't think he respects him. I think he just has this little thing like, I know I have control of it. If I don't want to fight you, I can retire. And they might say a little something about me, but I don't think he's saying, basically saying to him, tell me, you're not great enough for me to fight you, man. And who's calling for that? I mean, people are, but are you not, my legacy is still going to be with, with it, what it is if I never fight you. You don't have the greatness I'm looking for. And every time we talk about this, Benavidez somehow or another slips up. I think he's a pretty good dude, but you can't get this dude. If you want to fight him, you got to make the people call it out. If you keep doing simple stuff when you kind of embarrass yourself by putting yourself in a good light, people going to say, you don't take it seriously, so you're not worth it. Ryan Garcia kind of gave you the blueprint of, hey, I don't take it seriously, but I can still go in there and win a, <laughs> win a fight. So that's going to be an excuse that like, okay, you, you may be afraid to, to really kind of fight. And that's the way I see it. And I know that's going to um, rub Carnelo uh, Alvarez fans the wrong way. I've seen this for years that he he avoids certain fighters. Now he got in there with Baval, but Baval um, caught him and got him. And I don't think Canelo Alvarez wants that again, where he gets another L on his in, on his resume. I don't think he wants that. I think that he feels, and a lot of fighters in this day feel like if I lose, then that's a L on my legacy. And I, I you know, I want to be as close to perfect as possible. Where you have some of the greatest fighters who lost like three, four, five, six fights. But they went in there and fought, and they put their championship on the line um, to be the best. And I admire them guys, uh, those guys who – everybody can't be undefeated. So uh, I admire those guys who went in there, took a chance, they lost, and then they came back and redeemed themselves later um, with uh, maybe a rematch um, or uh, coming back and, and winning some big fights in other weight classes. Uh, but there's another fight uh, that you wanted to talk about. i um, let you lead on that one. You tell me what. Look, you know I'm old. You got to remind me what we just. You, you, we just talked about this. I'm putting my money on you, sick. Uh, I'm putting it on tonight. Uh, I'm putting it on uh, DraftKings right now that the little man will beat uh, uh, Tyson Fury. Now Tyson Fury has been quiet uh, these last few weeks, which is probably the, the quietest I've seen him. Maybe he's taking this fight seriously, but Usyk to me ain't no joke, and I think Usyk is going to come in there and um, really kind of uh, stifle uh, that big reach that Tyson Fury has and catch him uh, and, and keep catching him until he nice knocks Tyson Fury uh, either down or out. But I'm putting my money on the little man, as you call it, as Tyson Fury calls him. So me and you are gonna have a debate about this. We're gonna agree to disagree on this. Usually we kind of, on the same fight is like we go no nah, not this fight no nah, no nah. not after what frank Ngannou did to to tyson fury no nah, he's done he's done <laughs> wow man you know the one thing this is i love this because you know you you stand what you stand to your guns you stay sticking with what you, what you believe and that's cool that's why we yeah, this makes great discussion this is why people go yeah i want to listen to what they got to say and check this out but I'll just say this, you know, I, I won't warn you, I'll just remind you that Tyson Fury has been through hell in a handbasket, a lot of stuff that he brought on himself, right? self induced uh, whatever, whatever he's done to himself, and then he gained a lot of weight, came back down, became champion, fought uh, Wilder three times, and, you know, he faced, he went into the, to the fire, and he came out, whatever, and then he goes off the rail again, it seems like, and then he it was in Nganu and he went fought him and, and everybody, oh my God, you know, he lost it and blah, blah, blah. But then we saw with the the uh, UFC guy we got manhandled, you know, again, try to fight Joshua. And Joshua was like, whoop. And you just kind of look at it that way. But uh, this fight in particular, the belts are on the line. It's for all the marbles. And I think, and I and I like, I'm not. I'm never, you, know, you got to just say what you can about Usyk. Usyk has uh, proven that he's great. He got the title. He went from middleweight, middleweight slash cruiserweight, 
and stepped up with the big boys and, you know, gave a serious boxing lesson to AJ, you know, to AJ, you know, Anthony Joshua twice. And he can move, he can what he can do all that. But just something about the quirkiness and the madness of Fury. When he might, I mean, because to me, I don't know how he was able to survive those wars with Deontay Wilder. It just didn't make sense. Most other people would have been out. He did it. And when you fight a guy like this, Fury is going to be, you don't hear from me. You can tell when, if he's serious when he dropped the weight. And they showed him weeks not too long ago. And he's in shape. And when he's in shape, not the best fighter, not the most skilled fighter, under, under, unorthodox as hell. But uh, uh, you got one man, uh, what is it? Uh, is it Sugar Ray up there in uh, in the Detroit? Sugar Hill. Yeah. Former uh, coming out of the crunk gym. They had that chemistry. And, and they always have a game plan. So, you know, don't, we don't, Fury is not this slow, uh, methodical monster like the Tim Zoo, like a mon, like a Frankenstein dude. He can move around a little bit. And the thing is, though, about him, if you don't keep him away, the, qu the only question, the main question is why I'm going with Fury in this fight is because the look of mine, you can run, but you can't hide. After a while, what are you going to do when he catch up with you? I know you can you throw punches and you're not scared of anybody. But when you get that big dude, man, and he got power too, if he catches, you might knock him in the next week. That's the only thing about it. As crazy it is, and you can just see it in Tyson Fury's eyes. He's like, it's almost like a crazed look. Like I'm about to destroy this motherfucker because y'all don't believe I can. Same way y'all thought about me by Deontay Wilder. And I think when he put this in his mind or something, particularly in that ring. It's a matter of time, bro. I think other times you just, eh, I don't know. You know, they don't really press about it. This one, no, because if he win this and he get all the belts, what you going to say? You got to give him his due. Even if you never fight again, you got to give him his due. The way he be wild and get all the belts now, it's like, I don't, I don't even know if I ever want to fight again. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him his due um, if that happens. But while you were talking, I just put my my bet down on Usyk. DraftKings, you get you got my money again. Uh, put my money down on Usyk because I, like I said, I I saw Usyk uh, really kind of handle uh, Anthony Joshua, and I've been watching fights of his, and I'm like, I think he can get Tyson Fury. I really do. He's a tough, he's a rough and tough customer, and yeah, I I, I know the length and and the eyes and all that other stuff, but. Uh, I'm going with Usyk on this one. I, I really got to go with Usyk. And not just based on the Frank Ngannou fight, but just uh, Tyson Fury. When I saw in that fight and other fights, sometimes he gets surprised and then he wants to fight. But the last time I saw him fight is that he tried to get serious and fight and it wasn't working. And I felt Ngannou won that fight. Um, he was trying to turn it around while I was in the ring, make adjustments. It just wasn't working. And you can't do that again, Usyk. You cannot do that against Usyk. Usyk will figure it out. And uh, and when he does fall, you're going to hear me at my place going, Timber! Because <laughs> I think he's going to catch him. I think he's going to catch him more than once in this fight. And he's going to lay him down. Now, and now Tyson Fury is tough. I think he's going to get up. I think he's going to get I'm hoping he doesn't. But I, he's going to get his tough guy, a tough customer. Um, but I think you should go lay him out a, a couple of times in this fight. And then he's going to try to get serious. And it's just not, he's not going to be able to turn it around like he did um, or try to do with the Nganu fight. Think about it this way. Tyson Fury survived one of the greatest bombs yep. in boxing history. Yeah. When Wilder connected late and he still got up. Some people say it was slow down, whatever. Yeah. He got up and still ready to fight. And you think the little man gonna be able to put them paws on him like that? And take I him down? Think the little man gonna put them paws on on Big Tyson Fury. I don't care what Sugar Hill say in the corner. I don't care what Tyson Fury. He's been quiet. He's been abnormally quiet all these weeks. The fight is in maybe a couple of weeks. He's been quiet. He's been quiet. May 18th, he's been quiet. 
My bad. Like, yeah, I'm not thinking. Or he working on some secret kind of formula or right. uh, whatever to, to get this guy out of here. Yeah, I must think I'm drinking because I probably should go race that shit heal my bad shit. <laughs> You I got straight. caught up. I got caught up. I kept. I had that Thomas Hearn Hearn syndrome. Cigarette, cigarette. So I'm sitting here. I got you, my bad. <laughs> so, but since we are here, real quick, do me a favor. And I'm not. We're not. We're not telling anybody to do anything because you're not a better. You're not gambling. Don't don't do this because we're not telling you what to do. No, we don't give gambling advice. This is our own personal thing that we're going after. So with that being said, uh. You got some odds over there. I know you just made a bet. Give me some odds. What does what it what does it look like? For I'm just before you know I get caught up in what I'm doing. Uh, they that? got they got uh, Tyson Fury minus one fifteen. Usyk uh, minus one ten. Uh, I didn't go to the more bets on um, the uh, the you know who would be the favorite if it's over or under ten rounds or ten and a half rounds. I hate when they do the half rounds. So, so you telling me that right now Fury is the is the favorite? Slight favorite. One fifteen, one ten. Fifteen for ten, yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm not the only one to feel this way. So yeah, it's it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight, and it whoever makes a mistake, and I'm thinking that. Fury will make the mistake, do something that's that's crazy, um, you know, coming in with crazy music, coming in, you know, dancing around, all that other kind of stuff, thinking he could beat the little man, disrespecting us little guys, little man, calling him a little man. He's a, little man. <laughs> He's a man, damn it. <laughs> He's smaller than him. He's a little man. He's a little dude. Disrespect. Little. How disrespectful can you be? He, he called him. She called him little dude. <laughs> but being disrespectful, I'd be training like good. call me a little man, call me a little man. Yeah, I'd be training even harder. Call him a little dude. What's up, little dude? <laughs> like he's his little brother in the ring. Yeah, tap on the head. The disrespect. That's what he's gonna try to do in the ring. And get his clock clear. I hope he tried to do some of them antics. Cause, cause to touch you, know, him. you know he kind of balled into. Yeah, 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 he yeah. yeah. His head, get him to go like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rub his head or something like that. Oh, I hope he did that to get music bad. Ooh. <laughs> 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 I hope. I hope. Time he's going to bring back the three students. Yeah. <laughs> Say something in the pre-fight or something that you know. I told you, little man. Because Yusik has those intense eyes too. And he was like, he was like you know, yeah, he does. He be like, "Hey, you gonna be like, told you, little man. Whoop, whoop. Chow, 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 chow. You can never beat me, little man. You can never beat me. I'm too big. I'm too fast. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking for some kind of edge that Yusik can have to say, you know what? I'm gonna clean this guy's clock. So the odds are, are very uh, slim on who's the favorite in this in this particular fight, but uh, I got my money on Usyk. I, I I've been impressed with him, um, and 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 then going back just watching some of his fights, I'm like, this guy, he, he, you know, this guy got the skills to pay the bills. He got the skills to pay the bills. So if he wins the heavyweight championship, you're gonna see Joshua. Will we see Joshua kind of try to step up and say, okay, let's third time's a charm. Who's gonna step in? Uh, with this guy, if he wins, and then if Tyson Fury wins, you know who does he go to? Are we going to get the fight that we've all been waiting for for the last few years? Uh, you know, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. So, um, you know, who's to say? You know, this is the guy you didn't want to fight. He fought this guy two times and and handled him twice. So why why would he fear you? Yeah, no, I agree with that one hundred percent. I'm I'm gonna keep it with uh, like you said with Usyk. I think Usyk. Uh, he kind of make a decision as to what he wants. I don't, I'm not, I don't think Anthony Joshua wants to see that again. He may have the money's right. If it's too much money, he might just have to take it anyway. But, uh, you know, maybe there's something wild depending on what's going on and how this come, guys come back. Does Usyk uh, try to get some real money and fight Deontay Wilder if he's if he's back fully? But we don't know that either. But uh, Or maybe Usyk says, hey, that's enough. I'm going to do something else. You know, or maybe he, I'm not sure if he can drop down. I mean, because heavyweight champion of the world is what it is. 
Well, maybe you can get a catch weight and fight somebody like a, a better V or Baval, which I think would be a hell of a fight out of either one of them dudes. You get them close to 190 or whatever, even at cruiserweight. Yeah. And he probably won't do it because he's a heavyweight. But I, I'm almost certain he can still drop it down to cruiserweight if he wanted to. But when you're the heavyweight champion of the world, why would you drop right now? I'm not sure if he would do that, but I would love to see him fight one of them guys. I think it would make for a more better skill fight. Um, and as you mentioned before, if uh, if Fury wins, hey, AJ is right there. Everybody's been wanting that fight. And it's not that it's the greatest fight in the world, but it would be the most lucrative. Because nobody, I don't know about you, nobody else, I know I don't want to see Wilder versus Fury ever again. No. Ever, 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 never, ever. I, I never want to see that fight again. So, but Anthony Joshua, I'm excited about that. Something to that effect. Or, you know, you mentioned about uh, some other cats, but that's where we stand right now, just to kind of see where those guys are, are stepping up. Uh, what is it? Uh, we also need to see what is that? Is that Anderson? Jared Anderson? Yeah, we need. I need to see him fight against another top notch guy. He's been around long enough with a young guy to step up. Maybe he get a shot, but. I'm looking forward to this fight. I think it's going to be great. Uh, they've been talking about it forever. It's time to get it on. We've had a lot of postponements or whatever. I need to find out. I need to get off of here and listen to my, uh, check out my, my my personal bookies and see what they're saying. And go and make that money, get that bet going, bro. Because I got Tyson Fury with a knockout. With a knockout. All right, we're going to be debating this for another couple of weeks. But uh, you mentioned about Terrence Crawford. He had the fight in August. And um, we've been talking about Terrence Crawford um, and who he's going to fight next. Uh, I'm glad that he got got a fight uh, hooked up in August. Maybe he'll fight again at the end of the year. Um, I would like to see that uh, because it, it seems like he's took in, It's almost been a year since he's beaten um, Errol Spence, I think. And... Mm -hmm. um, I, I think time is ticking on him because he's, he's an older fighter and he needs to make some money and he needs to um, get fights. Now, now, if Carnelo doesn't want to fight you, don't stop it there. Just just keep dominating and beating folks um, until Carnelo uh, comes out of his shell and wants to fight. And uh, maybe it's some money uh, that is going to be involved in that to get him to do that. But Terrence Crawford, this fight against Ishmael, uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, Mardemo. Um, what do you think about this in the junior middleweights moving up in weight? Yeah, uh, what's interesting about Marjumov, uh, Israel Marjumov, he's young. He's only had like 11 fights, 12 fights, right? But he won. He was uh, got an opportunity to fight the champion, and he beat him. And he's been dominant. He's been knocking folks out, too. So he hits real hard. He's young. He's not afraid. They said they were trying to bring him up a little slowly, but he was like, nah. He said he, he wanted to go back home and fight in front of his home crowd, but then a Terrence Crawford opportunity came up, and they go, you hear, and you hear Eddie Hearn in the background going, Terrence, you're really good, but this dude is special, you know, all that. So Terrence Crawford beating that up. And, and I think Terrence Crawford takes this fight, he took this fight, one, because if he wins, he becomes a champion again, right, on that level for another belt. But uh, it gives him a chance of a taste at 154 to see what he can really do. So there's a lot of opportunities at 154 where you can fight some people with stature, with some belts, or some for some belts. And then if he wants to feel froggy and leap to 160, he can get some of that too. And uh, then eventually, if you really feel like, hey, you got this going on, try to get Canelo to come to 168. So that that's pressing the issue, but that'd be an opportunity because he wants to be, he said he wants legacy fights. And if he keeps moving up the ladder to see how it goes, I think that's going to be great. Uh, as I told you before, they have some other outstanding uh, uh, underbouts on that card that, that are going to be amazing, too, as well. So, you know, you got uh, Tim Zeus coming back in August, just coming out that horrific uh, ending with Pandora, and he's fighting the, the up-and-coming Virgil Ortiz. This is, oh, my goodness. This is, for boxing fans, you want to see this. You, I hope it, nothing changes it because in Tim Zhu, we know he, the guy who literally couldn't stop the fight with all that blood in his face and just went on and fought for another day. He didn't do that. And you, you got an up-and-coming guy like Virgil Ortiz that is a hard hitter, no nonsense. 
it'll be interesting how these styles clash. I'm glad they got this together. It is awesome from that standpoint. Uh, then you also have uh, you have Andy Ruiz is fighting uh, Jarrell uh, Miller. I, I like that because Miller's been trying to come off and show what he is. And to this day, I'll say this: when he's in shape and wants to fight, I think people have been sleeping on Andy Ruiz. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that started with the Anthony Joshua fight when he showed you what he could do. When Andy Ruiz is in shape and focused, you don't want to, you don't want you do not want to see him. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him versus Deontay Wilder, but again, Deontay seemed like he lost his mojo. And maybe that's because he was spending a lot of time with his family. And I'm okay with that. Because I know he's talking about talking about fighting Zane coming up. But if Deontay Wilder can't be that mean, angry dude. Just retired, bro. And even I'm cool with that. I appreciate all that. Even the Saudis have been saying that, like, he needs that fire. Um, yeah, we're looking for that fire to come back. And I I don't know how you turn it on if you're him. I was watching the George Foreman movie, and uh, they're talking about that. How can you just turn it back on? Where um, he fought Jimmy Young. He, he uh, lost to Ali, then he came back, then he won a couple, and then he fought Jimmy Young, and Jimmy Young was a great counterpuncher, and he beat him. And he just said, you know what? I'm done. I'm not doing this. I'm dedicating my life to the Lord. But, you know, he just decided to come back and be a boxer and won versus uh, with, when he got when he lost to Holyfield. He came back and lost to Holyfield, and then he came back and uh, beat uh, Michael Moore. But, uh, yeah, he just changed his style and became more of a boxer, but he took a lot of hits. But he was just doing what he had to do. So it's kind of hard to switch up and change when you've been doing something the regular way the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, I was reading an article where the Saudis were like, we need this, we need this, this, this guy that had that fire. You know, we don't, we don't know where you are at this particular point. But if, if he can't do that, then I, I would say he needs to step away because that was part of his um, – his, his style, his niche, his uh, persona, uh, coming in with that fire and uh, looking at him in the last two fights, he just seemed like a calmer, gentler Wilder. And that's not, that doesn't work for him. It doesn't work for him as far as boxing. And um, he got to do get some, um, I know boxers aren't supposed to be uh, lifting weights and stuff like that, but he got to do some leg work. He got to do leg days at least two or three times a week uh, to get them legs back together again because um, it, it looked like, um, um, he couldn't even, you know, stand on those legs, and they were they they looked a little anemic, to be be quite honest. No, I, I agree with one hundred percent, but I think more than it is about the legs. You said anemic. I think it has to do with his stamina, mm. and I think that was the same thing when he came in with that crazy headgear costume that made him sweat, and he almost passed out or whatever a couple of times. I think the same, almost the same syndrome of. What happened to Thomas Hearns versus Sugar Ray Leonard? Mm. You just always get that close to the end, and then you just, it's almost like, you know, you had an insulin drop and it was like out. Yeah. And, and I noticed between the two of them, you know, they never stopped quitting. They never quit. He and Thomas Hearns, they just keep banging and banging to the end. But right at that point, it seems like they lose almost all, a lot of the energy. And I, I to me, that's why I think literally, and both fights that Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas Hearns fought, Sugar Ray Leonard knew Thomas Hearns had him on the ropes, but he couldn't finish him. Yeah. Same way in the second fight. And I think Deontay Wilder, when you saw him in certain places or whatever, he just, he, one, he don't have the, the that, that killer instinct anymore. And two, it's just like, man, I haven't done this in a while, so maybe I'm not, you know, I'm training, but I'm not, I have, I have ring rust because I'm not in the ring like I used to be. Okay. Um, there are two future shows that, that, that uh, I'm working on. And uh, one of them, I know we're, we, we pledged to do last year, the wrestling show, um, and, uh, and feature some of the uh, old time wrestlers that we used to follow. And uh, I want to do a show on pound for pound, uh, regardless of weight class, uh, the top 10 pound for pound boxers of all time. And these are boxers that are, are currently not currently fighting but you know pound for pound that's going to be a hard show and maybe we can get our buddies from Wilberforce uh to come in and do our pound for pound uh show and uh, show our list 
and uh, and argue and debate on who's pound for pound uh, because I've been looking at it um, um, different uh, footage of different fighters Sugar Ray Robinson uh, of course Muhammad Ali of course Joe Lewis uh, Pernell Whitaker uh, you know um, you know Andre Ward uh, who's the best pound for pound top ten pound for pound regardless of weight class that should be a show but that's coming up we'll we'll uh, plan for that and uh, put it up really soon but i don't want you to give away pound for pound but uh what do you think about those two ideas right there no you know a lot of wrestling well my granddaddy called it wrestling wrestling i'm sorry for those that are politically correct i know it to be wrestling but uh <laughs> i think that's outstanding because it did have a place in culture as far as entertainment is concerned and now they just insult you by the way they put it on tv and repeat stuff and, and the stories back then, the actors or what have you, the wrestlers or the wrestlers put everything they had into it, and you were just in the, you were in them, just in there with them, in the ring, outside of the ring, and and the the talk was amazing, just yeah. the, the trash talking just drew you in, and it, it just it was amazing, and, and you just could not, it's hard to turn off, and I love uh, kudos to uh, Ted Turner and TBS, they knew exactly what to do. Right there with weights. It might be a rain delay or uh for the Braves, or it'd be 30 minutes right before the game. And then they'd be like, all right, we got a special uh, uh ceremony, such and such, such and then they they have like they had actors on call and they throw you in there in the ring and, and then they start it and, and you know the time running out, and they just they didn't give a damn. They they kept you on the hook. Yeah, and I know they 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 cut you off on purpose because you couldn't see the ending. Right. Like, oh my God, did you you know they just I was like, this is brilliant. You all had to be up. And then they got him with the jump ball, they got work. <laughs> <laughs> Another brain baseball. Yeah. But TV, oh man, they that man, that that was brilliant, man. That was, I mean, I love that. I mean, and you knew it, you couldn't help it. You was like, what? <laughs> yeah. you know. it, it, it's brilliant. So it was, it was. It, it was uh, being yeah. black, we gotta get black on that show too because I remember as kids at eleven o'clock on Saturday night, that's when wrestling was on, and so you watched it, and you, you know they they give you that cliffhanger at the end, and you couldn't wait, you couldn't wait, you know, <laughs> for the next Saturday to find out what happened. But the next day we were all outside. Did you see such and such and such? And, and you know we were just excited, you know, because it was must see TV. You had to watch it, or you're gonna be left out of the conversation the next day. So, you know, I was watching Thunderbolt Patterson during the uh, the Hall of Fame, and it just brought back all these memories, you know, memories of all the trash talk and stuff. So it was like Saturday night at 11.55, you're like, oh, no, what's the cliffhanger going to be? And then they just, you know, like you said, the fighting at the end, and you don't know what's happening, and then they just cut it off, and you're still kind of hyped. So you couldn't sleep until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning because you're so hyped seeing them you know, mm -hmm. all, all hyped up there in that show. So for kids, for, for us, I don't know if the kids still feel the same way now as mm -hmm. we did as kids seeing that because, you know, the, the, the drama behind it was like unparalleled, you know, as far as I'm concerned, because it left you wanting more every time, every time. Yeah. That, that's what made great entertainment. That made you, they got the adults riled up, and of course, the, the adults brought in, like my granddad brought in the kids, because the kids just glad to be with granddad and they called <laughs> up too, you know. I remember that, man. It was yeah. just like my grand, that's what me and my granddad did. We watched wrestling. You know, other my, my other cousins, they tried to get into it, but me and my granddaddy, man, we were I said I called my grandfather, my granddaddy. Yeah. That's who my granddaddy was. And like I told you, he took me to see my first wrestling match. And I was like, and once I realized later on in life who I saw as a kid, yeah. it was like, man, this is That's historical. But uh, get back to the point about the top 10 uh, pound for pound in boxing and overall, that's going to be a tough one because, you know, when you say that, you could talk about dominance in the era or whatever, but the one thing I'm probably going to be, one of the things I'm really going to be looking at is how was this, this person able to adapt style-wise? How would he, no matter who he was fighting, how would they how would they be able to handle situations? 
I mean, it's not so much the weight, but I'm just saying, if you fought a boxer, how did they, how would they adjust? If you fought somebody that was really more of a puncher, how would they, did they have the ability to adjust? Because I'm, I, while I, I have a great appreciation for knockout, knockout artists, people that really just KO, quickly KO you out, KO, KO you, no matter what, I love Mike Tyson, I have an even greater appreciation for the technicians. Yeah. The that can, you know, on the fly, okay, well, he coming over with this, he catch me. I can't do my normal, so I got to switch over here. I got to box more, or I got to go for the kill because if I don't, he might come and get me later on. The uh, the ability to adjust in boxing is amazing, and that's what we call a technician instead of a guy that does one thing well, and if he catches you, it's almost night-night, right? I like Ryan Garcia in the left hook, but sometimes those cats are known as one-trick pony. So it, it can work both ways, but it just kind of depends on the looseness and the flexibility and then the, the ability to uh, maintain and alter what you do, change your style up a little bit in order to get the victory. Right. He's Ice Water. I'm Puma. And this is Fight Game.